name is Karen Anderson. I have been in the business with It Works for almost four years. I am a diamond leader. Listen, I talk about myself all the time when I meet when it comes to being the hard headed person on the money squad. I will take that trophy. Listen, I will take the trophy. I was one of the most hard headed people on the money squad. But when I tell you, like, just coming into this business has literally changed my, my entire life. And I'm not even talking about the money side of it. It's more of the mindset. Um, when I came into this business prior to, um, my son was literally a premature baby. I had him at 24 weeks. He was one pound, 12 ounces. And during that time frame, when I tell you, I went through what seemed like the roughest time in my entire life. So I went from, you know, going through bad postpartum depression, attempted to commit suicide three times during that time frame. And when I tell you, Literally, it works save my life. Coming into this business, it works save my life. So I do want to go ahead and just, you know, introduce our guest. It is Cami Pentecost. Come on now. Can we all go ahead and say welcome to our call for the night to Miss Cami? Listen, I'm so excited um, just to have you on here. And I'm really honestly a little nervous to be interviewing you for today, but <laughs> we're going to get into it. I'm excited. Um, so I had to put my little notes, um, I had to put my notes in my phone. Okay. So I had to put my notes in my phone so I can make sure I had all of my questions together for Miss Cammie. So um, I wanted to just start off by saying Rachel really focuses a lot on um, mindset when it comes to the squad. So that's one of the things that we are really going to be focusing on today when it comes to like a lot of the questions. Um, so I did want to go ahead and tell the team if we, I'm at the end, if we have enough time, I do want to take two questions. So if you can go ahead and just direct message me in the chat if you have a question that you would like me to ask. But we're going to go go ahead and get right into this. So Miss Cammy. Um, I want you to take a moment just to introduce yourself to the squad and just touch a little bit about, you know, where you were mentally before starting the business. Like what, what was the moment for you where you were just like, okay, I need to make this happen. So what was your life like before you came into the business? Well, first of all, I just have to say, Karen, I am so excited to be on this call with you and I'm really looking forward to this interview. Thank you so much for spending your time tonight doing this. Woo -woo. Everybody give it up for Miss Karen. And I just got to say, I haven't had a warm welcome like that in quite some time. As a matter of fact, I did a call last night. I mean, it was meh. All right. But like from the moment I jumped on, you guys have been blowing up the chat room. So thank you for making a girl feel so good. I appreciate that. Um, Wow, Karen, that's a great question. Okay, what was life like before I joined at Works? Well, I'm curious if you mean the first, the second, or the third time. Do you, do you wanna do you want me to tell what life was like before the first, second, or third time? And the I can, first time. The first time. Okay, so I can sum that up real well. First time, I was like 18 years old, just graduating high school, and it wasn't even my choice. I just kind of felt like my arm was being twisted, you know, like this is what family does. We support each other. So dad started a company, joined the business. Okay, I'm in. And I was just like deer in the headlights, right? Like I'm going to college and you guys literally probably from the minute I could talk or think I wanted to be a teacher. I mean, that's all I can remember. That's all I have a brain cell for teaching and coaching and really basketball. And so, um, you know, I just had zero interest, never sales or business or anything like that. So that was, you know, environment before joining number one. Environment before joining number two was um, I was in college and I was thinking, I think I was like a sophomore and I feel like the company was really struggling. So there was just this pressure to, you know, I think my dad felt like, so I think you can imagine this. Think about that person you know and you see and you just know they would be awesome if they would do it. And it almost makes you mad and you can't have a relationship with them because you're like, or maybe they're actually on your team, but they're not doing or living up to the potential you know they can be. How frustrated do you get with that person? Well, I was on the flip side of that going, like, that's fine. I'm glad you believe in me. I, that's fine. I'm glad you want more from me that's fine. I'm glad that you think I'm not supporting you. 
I couldn't see it. I couldn't see it. I didn't have a, I, I just, I didn't get it. So it didn't matter how mean they treated me. It didn't matter how much pressure I felt. It wasn't going to happen, you know? And I joined that time and actually did a little bit and I needed the money, you know? My mom and dad had money at that time, but they did at least not me. And I can't speak for Kinsey or Kyler. I can speak for a little bit of what I felt like I saw. But for me, my dad did not give out handouts. He just didn't. And I appreciate that because it made me a very hard worker. And so I'm going to school full time and I wasn't doing your normal 13, 14, 15 credit hours. I was doing 21, 22 credit hours a, a semester. And I was doing, I was waitressing. I'd go home every other weekend and I would waitress from the second I got into town till the second I left. And I'd make several hundred dollars to keep me by for the next couple of weeks, you know. But um, so again, just not right timing and my heart wasn't in the right place. Now the third time, let me paint a little picture for you of what my life looked like. Whew, I'm trying to talk as fast as I can, but I ain't got nothing on Sherry Lynn. Um, but so the third time you guys, brand new married, I would call us a couple of dinks, double income, no kids, Rob and Peter to pay Paul every month. Both school teachers, living in a centennial home, nothing extravagant by any means, and uh, just struggling and not even knowing it, right? Because we were, we were fine. But then I have my son Landon and I start looking that kid in the eyes and I'm like, oh, wait a minute. As much as I wanted to teach my whole life, I've more always wanted to be a mom. So I couldn't imagine going back to school and raising everybody else's kids while somebody was home raising him. So that's when everything changed for me. And I think at that moment, I realized my husband wasn't going to do anything about it. Like my desire to be home with my son, my desire to, and I say my son because it really took looking Landon, my oldest in the eye. So I always say Landon was my muse. Landon was my reason. And I obviously I love Colton and Skyler, but it was Landon who was the linchpin for me that changed everything. So um, it was in that moment where I just, I couldn't, I couldn't go back to school and raise everybody else's kids. And if you know me, if you have kids, your kids will be my kids very quickly. If you'll give me any reins to them at all, I just love kids. It's how God wired me. So it's no surprise I wanted to be a teacher, but I just, I just like, you know, I realized in that moment, I was already barely getting by every month. We thought living the dream was eating pizza once a month. You know, there was a tavern down the road from our, the high school where we coached. And we were a couple of coaches and teachers. We never went home. And even to go out for drinks, I remember my uh, ex-husband and I fighting because I'd be like, how do we have, how do we have money for rounds of beer when we don't even have money to pay our bills, you know? And so it was just a very frustrating time. And I'll never forget um, hearing Zig Ziglar say that he had problems with money and he had problems without money. And he'd rather have problems with money every day of the week. And he was a Christian man. And what I love about that statement is, you know, the lack of, of money creates a whole lot more stress and there's just no breathing room. And so you just get a whole lot more uptight about everything. And I don't know if you guys can relate to that, but that's where we were in our life. Both school teachers, both coaching and picking up summer jobs to try to get a little extra, you know, everybody says teachers get into teaching because they, they uh, want to have their summers off, but there ain't no such thing. Like you're working side hustles constantly because you're just trying to make ends meet. So Karen, that is a long answer to a very short question. And I hope that helps. No, that, that was actually good because one of my next, one of my next questions was going to be, um, has there ever been a time where you felt like if any time during your journey or your career, like I just want to give up because like I did know that some of your story where you were in the business more than one time. And I think a lot of people don't understand that a lot of people have those moments in their life. And until they're ready to co go ahead and just go, you know, go all in that they can sometimes just, you know, maybe it's, this time is not right now, but I can try it again. And some people just, you know, they don't understand that even, you know, someone as such as you, because a lot of people, like, a, let's just be honest, a lot of misconception is because this is a family-owned business that everything is just handed to you. And I'm like, no, you know, that's not it. She it, she literally had to start from where we are now and work her way up so that nothing was handed. It was like, I love the fact that you said that your dad didn't just give you handouts because you had to work and he wanted you to, to be able to um, 
just to have that story about, you know, I literally had to work this. And I think that was really honestly one of my next questions was like, have you ever had a, you know, a chance, not a chance, but have you ever had a moment in your life where you were just like, I want to give up. But I think that that would kind of be like one of your first time and your second time. Oh, girl, I'd like to pretend like that was only my first and second time, but let me give you a few more stories. <laughs> first okay. of all, you guys, I was sensitive to people thinking that I, got, I had it handed to me. So I think having my married name helped. Nobody knew I was Mark's daughter unless they were close to us. Number two, if you know my dad at all, you'll know it wasn't handed on to us. It probably He probably made me work a little bit harder. You guys, there were contests that he put out that I couldn't win no matter what. Like I was like, but I want to lead by example and show my team. And he was like, I'm sorry, you can't win. Like he just literally, boom, you're out. Like, so I didn't, sometimes I didn't have the incentives you guys had to work. I just had to, and he would say to me at the end of the day, you have to realize this incentive is building your business in the long run. So just like, stop thinking so small minded is what he would say. And I'm thinking the masses want the contest cause they're fun. And I want my team to see me do it. But um, I will say this. I never thought of quitting my business more times than after I started getting to higher ranks and greater income because I think that's where the mind games really set in. Now, I don't know who's on this call right now, but I would say that if this is diamonds and above, one thing, if this is everybody, that's another thing. Listen, you guys, um, I believe I quit time one and two because it wasn't about me, it was about my enroller. It was about the people pressuring me to join. And so I know that you guys, when you see something in somebody and you like believe in them and you're like, they don't get it, I just wanna shake them. At the end of the day, you can drag the horse to water, but you can't make them drink, right? And so if you beg them to join, you're gonna have to beg them to build. And if you get surprised by that at any moment, then that's on you, joke's on you. Like you're the one that begged them, convinced them, you know what I'm saying? Um, it really has to be one of those like divine, woo, you know what I mean? Like I'm meant to be here. And I really believe once you have that, that's where you just like, you don't leave. And so the third time when I joined, I, I knew it wasn't a matter of if, it was just a matter of when. And that's when I started like having success. And so all the things like I'm letting people down 24 um, seven, I don't have the best presentation. Um, now, once I'm making a lot of money, am I being too greedy? Do I want too much? Am I now a bad example of a Christian? You know, like all those things started getting in my head. And obviously we overthink the heck out of things. But I would say, I never thought about going to another company ever that never and i sometimes got offended that nobody tried to recruit me into other companies i was like what why does anybody want me i was like do people know i'm mark's daughter i don't know i think i gave off vibes that said i'm unrecruitable that's what i believe i believe i gave vibes that said don't come near me because i don't want to hear what you're selling i'm not buying i'm not shopping i'm not buying so i truly believe that's what was happening but it was not honoring the Sabbath that almost killed me in this business. It was, you know, getting my identity wrapped up into my titles that almost killed me in the business. So after those first few times that I felt the pressure to join for other people's purposes than my own, even if they were seeing something in me, I didn't see myself yet. It was that, that I gave up easily those first few times. But the third time I joined and you guys, if you've heard me tell my story before, you might have heard me say it was not a matter of if it was just a matter of when, and so for me, there was no option of quitting on the table. And I promise if you are like, I'm going to give it a year, I'm going to give it two years, I'm going to give it five years. If that's you, just so you know, your brain is looking for an exit plan because you've already given yourself one. I took all exit plans off the table the third time. I was like, okay, hey, I'm in. This is for me. It's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. However, that doesn't mean that the, 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 thoughts, the thoughts of self-doubt, self-sabotage, and, and there was definitely an enemy that wanted to kill, steal, and destroy to keep me off my game. And, you know, I, my flesh added to that. My flesh, my driven, achiever personality, my, my codependent, want to be everything for everyone personality kind of got myself in trouble many a times. But you know what? Here's the deal. I have found next to marriage, this business has taught me more about myself and a relationship with God than anything else. So that's ultimately the battle that's going on there. That's so good. Um, it's funny because I was while you were while you were talking, I was thinking about um, how I was, this wouldn't be my first time in the business, and I, it took me a while to realize, like, okay, all of the reasons it wasn't because of the company because the company is, has been phenomenal, 
it was everything that I was dealing with on the inside. Like I had to get past my feelings. And it was at some point it was really hard because I was so conditioned to just having that block up where it's like, I can't, you know, like it was one point where I didn't even like talking to people on the phone. I didn't like going on live. I didn't like doing anything dealing with building my business online. But now I, you, you, I would go live in a second and I think twice about it. So it was like a lot of growth. And I, I think when a lot of people come in, they expect themselves to have it all together. Like you're not going to come in here all together. Like this business, if anything, has taught me how to grow as an individual. It is far beyond money. And I think that when it comes to, you know, just looking at it from that standpoint, this you have to look at it more than just the fact that, oh, well, this business is going to give me some money. No, you're going to get back so much more. Like, I didn't even know what taking the Sabbath was. And my dad is a preacher. Like, <laughs> come on now. Like, I didn't know what a Sabbath was. And, you know, it was a lot of things that I've learned, even just being on the money squad. It's just like, man, just the company that we're in, you know, it's because it's a because Rachel and Breon set that foundation for the squad where we are spirit led and we want to put God first. So just coming into that and then knowing that our, our company is um, not only is it faith based, but it's family owned. It's just, it's just phenomenal to be able to be in an organization where everybody is putting God first. It's not just, you know, it's just not starting with the company and we're talking about it. It's just like, it's trickling down into the, into our actual teams. So when I tell you, just just speaking from me, like this business has completely changed my life. So when I tell you, I'm really, really honored to be able to just have this conversation with you. Um, it's, it's really an honor. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about was how um, oftentimes we, we really fall in the line of comparison. And I know one, you know, part of your story was how long it took for you to enroll your first business partner. And uh, I want you, you to just talk a little bit about, you know, how long did it take you to run, you know, to enroll your first business partner in? Like, how did you feel during that process as far as you feeling like any self-doubt during that time frame? Like, how did you get over that? Oh, well, here's the honest to goodness truth. Social media did not exist when I signed up. Like, not really. I didn't get on Facebook till uh, 2009 and I joined at works in 2006. Like, basically in the, like, fall fe or February, March timeframe of 2009 is when I joined Facebook and I joined it works in March of uh, 2006. So all that to say, it's a whole lot harder to compare yourself and really get in that game without that stuff in your face all day, every day. So, you know, I think you got to guard your heart when it comes to the comparison game as much as possible. And so have a plan for social media, but don't just like let social media be something that you just, um, scroll. I, I do, I do not scroll. So I'm going to say this as an example, guys, I feel almost embarrassed to say this, but I'm going to say this to you because I believe that this is an environment where you need to hear me say this. I completely believe in blocking what influences me in such a way. I am not scrolling social media. The only social media I see is every couple months I change up who I see first because that's who I want to engage with. That's who I want them seeing me interact. It's all a very big business decision. I'm not on there just happenstancing over people's profiles, feeds, etc. I didn't even know the thing with, it, with Mr. Floyd happened. I didn't even know. I don't watch the news. I don't scroll on social media. Like I literally am in like this little bubble and you can be like, that's hysterical. That's super naive. Well then call it whatever you want. That's how much I guard my environment. And news to me is a joke. Politics to me is ridiculous. And I've literally cut that out of my life for a long time. The only reason I knew things were happening with COVID was because of my kids and them being homeschooled and stuff like that. That made me have to like listen to a few things, but it was very limited. So I, I say that to you because the comparison game is super ugly. And I do believe you have a, you have the ability to really guard your heart. And, um, but here's the deal. You go to events, right? And you see people parading across stage. We, we encourage you to do that. So there's going to be a natural comparing that happens on that. But I think there's also a natural, just like we randomly are just um, scrolling social media. And I think that's just wasted time. And I also think it's not wise. Um, some of you might say, but how am I going to learn from others? I think there's a whole lot of other ways to learn without getting in the trap of comparison. So, um, all that to say, 
uh, the first six months really had nothing to do with comparison. It had everything to do with just lack of knowledge and lack of confidence. And so personal development back then and personal development now has completely been what has absolutely not only like helped me get in the game, but it's been what has kept me in the game. And then it has kept me from the comparison game and just genuine skill building, learning, growth, confidence, building, you know, all those sorts of things. And then the more I learn about your circle and your environment and all those things, the more that I've even been unapologetic about those things that I don't know, you know, and there's a few people in my life and even more so since, uh, the, the, the shooting of, and death of Mr. Floyd, not shooting death. Um, but I literally have some people now set up in my influence in my circle that will say to me, Hey, this is happening because I might not know. Like I would have no idea about what's happening with Epstein if that wasn't in place. I would have no idea about the sex trafficking and things like that. Other than somebody's um, Instagram, when I po pulled up my Instagram thing to, to look at something, somebody was the Disney and the Wayfair CEOs. And I was like, huh, eh, what's that? Um, but I was just, I just want you guys to know I guard my, what's coming in that much. Also, this is a great time to pause for the cause of a little commercial. And I want to say this to you. I know that while the Black Lives Matter movement and the opportunity for this world to learn more and more about the injustices that are happening, not just within the Black community, but definitely within the Black community and beyond, I want you guys to know I'm committed to growth in that area. And um, you're going to see me do nothing but continue to learn and grow in this area, whether it is front and center in our media or not. I don't care if it's a politics year. I just want you to know, like, it has done pissed me off and it's pissed me off because I didn't know. I didn't know. And so um, it took someone saying they were going to, it would take somebody putting somebody's knee on Brian's neck. And I was like, excuse me, hold up. What are we talking about right now? Why would anybody do that? You know, that really caught my attention for uh, how unfortunate things have become. So that was a little commercial, but I just want you guys to know, I know we're not perfect at that. And I know there are things where I mean, this book right here has been phenomenal. It's called Check Your Privilege, that you don't even know what your privileges are because you just live in them every single day, you know? So I want you to know that even though we may not have the same color of skin, that I'm committed to making sure you know day in and day out that you have a home here and it works. I will, I, I'm pretty sure I can speak for Myself, when, when you were talking about having this, like, that bubble, like, you filter, I really don't be knowing a lot of stuff until I might be just in the scroll game, going through Facebook, and I'm like, wait, what? When did this happen? And, or I would ask my husband, because he's always on social media, and he's always scrolling, he's always looking at things, so um, I sometimes, I don't even be knowing what's going on, so um, I think that I need to be more intentional about even having even a, a bigger bubble of peace. Um, mm. I, I really like that. So I know Rachel talks about that all of the time when it comes to, you know, her experience with hypno babies. Are like, it's a real thing. So I, she talks about that all the time. So that bubble of peace, I think a lot of us, especially on our squad, needs to definitely, you know, just revisit how can you, what does your bubble of peace look like? So I know Rachel talks about that all of the time. Um, one of the things that we talk about a lot is spiritual development. Like, that's one of the things that like spiritual development, personal development, that's like one of the top things that we have to do on this squad. Like it's not a non, it's a non-negotiable. So um, in the morning we have our daily, you know, Monday through Friday, we have our daily prayer calls where everybody hops on 7 a.m., get your butt up. I don't care if you're in the bed, get up, get on. Darn it. Darn it, she's froze, and she probably doesn't even know. <laughs> we got internet issues. Come on, Jesus. All of us, help us, Lord. Come on, bring her back. She was really saying some good stuff. I know, I know. Listen, my internet can be like that just any given day of the week. Help, oh, Lord. Okay, well, we'll get Karen back real fast. Okay, so I, don't, I didn't prepare questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe this is the time to see if anybody in the chat had a question. <laughs> Who in the chat has a question? First of all, 
for those who don't know the background of Kimmy while we're waiting to get Karen back, um, Kimmy is actually a black, well, I guess you're retired, but you are a black diamond still, because you got your <laughs> ring and pass it over. This is, I will take the black diamond ring. Um, but she's the black diamond in the business. And so what a black diamond is, is somebody who has made over $100,000 in a month for at least three months, for six months, excuse me, for at least six months. And she was a black diamond before she was a black diamond. So let's see. Who has a question? I, you know, I actually had a question. Like when you think about being black diamond before you were black diamond, like what were you focused on? Like what were you trying to get? Like where were you going? You know, you think you hit one milestone and it's like, and then what? Okay, like what's next? Like how did you keep, how did you keep going? Like, how did you keep elevating your mind to go to the next goal? Um, you know, Rachel, it was funny because I remember saying to my dad multiple times, like, can you create a new position? Can you create like a new goal? How about a contest? You know, I remember saying things like that to him and him saying, there's not enough at this ambassador level yet for us to even think about that. We got to get a whole lot more people that space. He's like, you got to come up with your own goals. And so it really became a space of just, so I remember my first goal in this business was obviously making enough money to step back from teaching. Then it was like $10,000 a month because like five figures a month, who would ever think I was a school teacher who made 30,000 a year with coaching? Who am I to get 10,000 a month? You know, it was those types of small wins that, that meant things to me, that meant big things to me. And really my why was, um, being able to stay home with my babies. But then beyond that, it became just these personal milestones that had deep meaning for me. And then because I was, ha I was having so much fun with this business and I was believing so much in what we could offer and how we could truly change so many people lives. One of my goals became, well, first it was to make more in a month than I made in a year teaching that said something to me. But the second thing was I wanted to make more in a month than my dad made in his highest paycheck in his previous company. This is why, because in my young, inexperienced mind, that was the best company I'd ever heard of. But I wanted to believe that it works was the best company I'd ever heard of. And so by me beating his highest goal, like his highest check, I felt like it works was now taking the place of what I had previously known to be the best company. And for me, having that foundation made me that much more um, bulletproof, right? Like, yo, you really can't hold me back now. Like, you can't tell me this isn't the best company and the best opportunity for everybody that came across my plate, which then instilled this just drive in me that not everybody was going to do this business with me. We all know that, right? We all get told no a heck of a lot of times and probably more than we care to admit. But what it meant to me is it was such a big deal that I believed then that everybody deserved to hear about it. It was almost like I'd leave no stone unturned. I'd stop pre-qualifying even more. How did but, you get yourself in a position to where you were chasing the bank and not necessarily a rank? Because there wasn't a rank, you know? Right. Right. So once I got to that, you know, I, I don't know if you guys remember, but a while ago, the ambassador average was somewhere around 30,000. So I think for me, ambassador meant beating what I was making in a whole year teaching, right? Which was just out of this world beyond anything I could think. So you're right, Rachel. It, I then had to start attaching dollar amounts. And when you think about it, we should be chasing a rank. We should be chasing a dollar amount. And the cool thing is, we can attach a dollar amount to a rank to help people have a clear path to get there. Now, once you get beyond what's there, it might be harder to say, okay, you say you want to make this much for this reason, this is where you should be. So I didn't have that path, but what I, what, what I did have was a why, a burning clarity that when I woke up in the morning, it just kept me moving, you know? And here's what I do know. Staying, stay, being distracted is by far easier than staying focused. Oh my gosh. And, and you guys, even if it wasn't a year of a pandemic, politics, Black Lives Matter, sex trafficking on a whole nother level, and all the conspiracy theories in between, like there is so many reasons to be distracted and rightfully so. Quite frankly, the other night, some of the things I was reading and the conspiracy theories and the Epstein things that I'm reading and the people attached, it made me physically ill, physically ill, because I believe more than anything, it's probably true. 
and and then I and then I watch how something and somebody is using the pain that the black community is experiencing from slavery to be a distraction from some of these other things that are going on to to keep us from uncovering what is really being uncovered right now. That's a whole nother story. But boy, am I thankful for Jesus because whoa, if there was that Jesus, I don't know what I would do. But you know what? distractions is the easy path focus is what the few do and when you stay focused when you eliminate distractions you will go farther faster than anybody has ever been and not because maybe you deserve it maybe not even because you earned it but you put yourself in position for miracles that's why that's what i believe karen is back i was karen yeah, girl. Yeah, I'm back. Oh, yay! <laughs> you making small talk while you were gone. That's all. <laughs> My internet was just acting crazy out of nowhere. Um, I was about to ask, like, um, like how we all start our day, our morning. We know how if we don't focus on getting our Jesus time in first thing when we wake up, the rest of the day just goes like to the wayside, like. You might as well just, because as soon as you go through Facebook, and especially if you're one of those people that like to scroll, like your mood can get completely messed up just from being on Facebook. Um, but if you start your morning off the right way, you know, and Rachel had to teach me this, because I was like, that is not true, but it is. <laughs> um, how do you start your morning off? Like, what is the first thing that you do when you want to get your just focus um, for the day? Well, I have a little journal setting by my bed. And in that little journal, I mean, it's like literally this big and I have a pen sitting by it and I literally wake up in the morning and I write down three or four things I'm thankful for. And I used to just like force myself throughout the day to say things I'm grateful for, practicing gratitude. But here's what I found. It's not natural to feel thankful and there's going to be a whole lot of days you wake up and you're not necessarily grateful. And I don't know about you guys, but I've had more mornings than I care to admit where I wake up having dread, dread you know, anxiety, um, overwhelm, um, fear, um, just, just anxious is the best way, but dread on the worst days, just dread, which I bind that spirit on a regular basis. But you know what, when I don't have to bind it is when I'm so disciplined in the area of gratitude. So first thing I do, I roll over, no matter how I feel, I'm not my five second Mel Robbins girl, five, four, three, two, one. Nope, that's not me. I roll over, I grab that gratitude journal and I start writing. And when I feel like that, that, you know, like I'm just mad at the world, I start reading previous gratitudes and it gets me in the space. It reminds me. I think that's why the Bible teaches us the practice of remembering because in humanity is not one that remembers things. We're always looking to lack in what we don't have and or what, what's coming our way that we're afraid of. So this is a way to really get my mindset right. You guys, I can say for at least the last three months, if not six months, I wake up in the morning. Literally, I wake up in the morning like this, even though I don't love to wake up. I wake up in my way like, I love you, Lord, and I live. Oh, I'm so thankful. Oh my gosh, I love you, Jesus. You're the best. I hate the mornings, but thank you. I love you. Like that's my morning thoughts now, but I think it's because I trained my mind. I really do. And so, um, so that's first. And then second is sometimes <laughs> I have two French bulldogs who are the prince and princess of my home. And so sometimes it's feeding them, juicing my celery. Sometimes it's feeding them and just like going right to the skinny brew for that mind clarity, you know? Um, but then immediately I go right back into my prayer chair. I go into my prayer chair. I start reading devotionals. It's not always the same. Joyce Myers has a great video out there about time with God. And she literally just says it doesn't have to look the same every day. And, and mine doesn't, you know, I definitely have books I'm referring to regularly, but mine does not look the same. Um, and then from there, if you're following me on Facebook, I do my coffee chats in the morning. I come straight out of that time with God into coffee chats. And then depending on the meetings and the demands for the day, it can be workout sauna, writing. It's a discipline I'm learning right now, big time. Sometimes it can look like um, right on to an appointment and things of that nature after the coffee chat. So those are a few of the ways that I start my day. That's good because a lot of people just get up and they 
the first thing we do is grab our phone. We don't even think about the fact that we woke up that morning. So I, I think that, that I think that's really good. Just and I know Rachel talks about this all the time. Just establish that morning routine where the first thing you're doing is not picking up that phone. Like e even to the point where I know a lot of us we used to say on YouTube, you know, where's the nearest sermon? Like, but we would always have our phones in our hand. The Bible was on the phones, and she talks a lot about you know about having a physical Bible. So I think that's really good. Just having that that me time where you're just dedicating. And a lot of people think, oh, well, I'll, I'll give, you know, God 30 minutes in the morning. I, 30 minutes is nothing. Like, you need to do a little bit more, <laughs> especially before you start your day. But um, I think that's really good. Like, you have, like, a solid routine. And I like the fact that you said that you have to train yourself to be, to actually be grateful for things in the morning. Because a lot of us don't think about that. I know that I, I know that I wasn't, like, at all. I will always think about, like, oh, my God, like, this is going on and this is going on. But then that starts making you feel even worse. And it's just like you go throughout your day and you whatever you're feeling, you're you're putting off on everybody else. You could be putting off on your customers, your business partners, your spouse, your kids. So I think that's really good. Just get out those feelings and make sure y'all write in y'all journal because Rachel gonna get us if we don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um I kind I guess that kind of goes into my next question. It's really about really all the things that we have going on in the world, like everybody is dealing with something from death to sicknesses to literally some of everything. So I was wondering if you ever, um, can you like describe if you're comfortable like a, a time in your life where life was taking you back to back and you still had to get up and, and keep continue to move your feet? Like what does, what does that look like when you're going through something and the only thing that you can think about is just to crawl in the ball and just stop moving? Like, how do, how do you find the strength to continue to press forward? Um, so I would say probably the three biggest ones for me in this business was, number one, when I had my miscarriage between Colton and, and Landon. So after Landon was born, I had a miscarriage. And um, might have been almost as painful as my divorce. And that's, that's a lot to say because my divorce sucked too. But um, so I would say my, my miscarriage then I would say my divorce. And I would also say when my dad was diagnosed with cancer um, and all of them kind of, and I almost went through divorce twice. Like I got divorced once, but I almost got divorced another time. So that was kind of like a two season deal. And you know what? I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you there weren't some days where I was just kind of like completely debilitated, you know, but, but I didn't give myself many of those days. And I thank God for it works every day, or I probably would have been in a massive depression or in big hole and it works has been kind of my church as well as this positive thing for me to pour myself into and some of you might be like well that's not facing the pain that's not feeling the feelings that's not healing here's here's the reality my friend you still have bills to pay you still have to keep a roof and food in the refrigerator and i'm not saying that god isn't going to be your provider but i don't believe i believe works with faith without works is dead so it's like a job. You don't show up to work enough days, you're gonna run a sick time and they're gonna stop paying you and you might even lose a job. So it works became the most positive thing I could pour myself into. And other than like addictions, depression, you know what I'm saying? Like it became just the most positive thing and the people in it works had my back and they could like some just knew and they were there for me like nobody else. So that, that's what I would say. And I just would remind you, this is a business that is like, you only get paid if you show up to work. Now we're building a residual income, but you gotta treat it like a job that you have to like get put in the hours. You gotta put in the time. That's good. Cause I know, I know just even just dealing with things that I personally go through is it, it, there are a lot of times where I just wake up and I'm just like, I just, I just feel like the world is crumbling down. Like I don't want to do anything, but I still show up and I'll, I'll, I'll show up in a way that no one really knows what's going on with me, but I, cause, because I continue to show up because I know that eventually it, like you said, this is, this is like a job. You have to treat it like a job and we're going to, it's, uh, and, and I don't want to sound insensitive, but sometimes I have to tell myself like, Karen, if you're working a nine to five and this happened, like say for instance, I have if I have someone pass away in my family, my job is gonna tell me you get three days of bereavement depending on who the person is, but you still gotta come back to work or and you may not even get pizza. You will get a couple of bereavement days, but after that you have to show back up. So why are you not giving your 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 business that same respect? Continue to show up even when it's hard for you. So oh, I, 
have you guys ever heard the saying that on a good day, this business needs you and on a bad day, you need this business? Well, it's really actually about the business, right? Like you got to show up when you're, everything's working. You got a great idea. Your team is in momentum. You got to show up because other people need to hear that, see that, feel that example, right? It breeds more success. Mm -hmm. On a bad day, you need to show up because you got to get those ideas. You got to keep your mind fed in positive places. But here's what I really believe. As much as it means business, I mean more than anything. I think it means even personal, professional, and anything in between. So, you know, I think those days that I didn't feel like I had anything to give by showing up, I was able to receive. And those days that I was on cloud nine and I felt like I was on the top of my game and God is good all the time, everything is working, you know what I mean? Then then I was able to give to people in ways that they needed to. So I think, I think you give, you get what you give and there will always be a time where you're going to come and need to be filled. And this is a place that will give you provision. Not because it's the place that gives you provision, but it's a vehicle that God uses to give you that provision. So good. Okay. So before I know we're coming down on our time, Yes, ma'am. You are doing so good. <laughs> Thank you. I was, you know, nervous around here in these streets. <laughs> okay, so the um, before I take one question from the squad, I have three statements for you, and I would like for you to give me a mindset shift or perspective or a perspective shift for those statements, and it has to be the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay things all of the time so I want you like when we hear things like let's let's talk about the way that you should think about it when you hear those things so like like a mindset shift or a perspective shift ready yep let's go I like okay. it <laughs> I'm too busy to work my business mm, you have other priorities Come on, you just hit You just hit a said a whole word with that one. <laughs> okay, second one is I can't afford to run my auto shipment. You can't afford not to run your auto shipment. Yes. Or or I would be like, what did you say your why was again? which tells you, you need to know why your team is doing this business. And if they don't know, and you don't know, you haven't asked enough or you haven't dug enough or you're not helped ask that, or you haven't asked at all. Because I guarantee when Mary Beth Dodd signed up and said, I, honestly, I want to be able to tithe and I want to be able to replace my couch. That if the first time I said, yeah, do this, that, or the other, she was just like, eh. I'd have been like, don't you want that couch? How are you going to tithe more? You know what I mean? Like those are places where you can, put that in place. But also I think if they say that I, I don't have money to run my auto ship, I think to myself, you can't afford not to run it because this is a business. You need the product. You need to be a bit product of the product. You need coffee so that you can be like, you know, dealing so that you can be one of these babies, you know? Um, so that's what I would say. Okay. The next one is I'm afraid to bring in business partners because I'm afraid I won't be able to leave them. Mm. You know more than they do. You just need to stay one step ahead. And best news is, what if they pass you? Well, that's some high class problems. I love all of that. Come on that, Cammy. You're over here giving us all the juice. I love that. <laughs> Um, I did ask the squad if they had questions, but because I got kicked out, I know I've seen one, but I couldn't read it. Um, so I don't see any more. Does anybody have any questions that they want to ask Miss Cammy? Go ahead and drop them in the chat really quick. Come on, y'all. Don't be shy. We don't got that much longer. <laughs> we don't got that much longer with her. Like, come on, don't be shy. You got, you have literally five minutes. <laughs> what is your daily routine? What is my daily routine? On the weeks I have the kids or the weeks that I don't have the kids? 
uh, in quarantine, not in quarantine. No, seriously, my daily routine majority of the time consists of I'm up between 5.30 and 6 every day. And I start the day like you guys heard me say earlier. Um, and then depending on how intense the day is work-wise will depend on whether I get to work out in the morning or whether I got to try to fit the workout in at night. And here's what I know. If I don't work out in the morning, it's 50-50 chance that that workout gets in because sometimes I work till bedtime. Um, the weeks I have the kids, I try to shut it down around between five and six because I got to feed them or get them to their activity. I'll answer text messages while I'm, you know, waiting for a practice to get over. I'll, I'll make some calls during then. Typically, if they're in school, I put them in bed and I get on calls and I finish out the night like that. Um, I, the weeks I don't have the kids, those are weeks that I travel if I'm not in quarantine or those are the weeks that I'm running calls many into the evening, getting work that I just couldn't get done the week they were there. I, I work a lot. I work a lot. Um, I might put my work down and read some books. Saturdays are definitely a day where I try to have time with friends, but I'm also always working because you know we don't have just nine to five Monday through Friday because I work so closely with the field. Um, so the, either Thursdays or Fridays might be a day I'm getting my lashes done, a massage, a doctor's appointment in the midst of meetings, you know, getting some of those things that I need to get done for me. And I don't even apologize for a minute because you guys know we can be on the phone running and hustling this business wherever we go. I just can't be in corporate meetings doing those things, but that's okay because I reserve Monday through Wednesday to be in a whole lot of corporate meetings. So then the field gets a lot less of me from the nine to five hours. Um, or I should say even the eight to five, eight to six hours. I wouldn't say, I, I'm, I, there will be a time where I pick up a few more hobbies like golfing or tennis, but right now my hobbies outside of this business are my kids. And I've been very faithful with some devotionals right now. I've been in a devotional nonstop, not a break. And I do not, it has been the best thing ever. Um, so that, I start my morning with, um, I probably do four days out of a week with, with celery. And then I, 30 minutes later, I do my skinny brew. If I have a second cup of coffee, Otherwise, I go right to drinking my reds and hydrate. You guys will see me carrying around containers like this all the time because this is how I mix my stuff and keep it from settling all day. I like things kept really, really cold. I make two or three of these a day in the morning first thing, and then I drink them throughout the day. So this one is uh, collagen and immunity, and another one that I really like. I actually don't really like it. I don't love the greens. I don't love the way the greens taste, but that's one of them. Um, but it's always reds and hydrate and collagen and immunity, always. Never, never miss a beat on those ones. Um, I might get an afternoon BFF in, and then I'm intermittent fasting from 11 till six. And then I'd like to say I'm slaying all night, but really sometimes I can't keep my head past 9.30 and my kids put me in bed, so there's that. <laughs> that was good. Um... One more question, and I think that um, this is a really, really good because it's the end, it's the end of the month. Uh, what tips would you have for someone that's promoting Diamond this month? Ooh, I mean, some of us will, number one, I think you have to have the perspective of there's not only four days left. Like, let's go. There's four days. We got four full days. Like, looking at the time that you have left is a lot of time and maximizing every minute of it. Um, I think that especially when you're running for a promotion, your no is more important than your yes, because it's what creates the focus. And remember what I said, it's so much easier to be distracted than it is to focus. Also, I would say it's where, you know, like many of you may make Fridays your follow-up Friday, but I'd say the last two, three, five days of the month are all follow-up days. I would say that you are adding on, checking in on customers, how they doing, looking at their perk points, how can they place an order with perk points, power hours round the clock where you're using the courage of each other's confidence to you know reach out to people you, you you're nervous to do that or to make new people meet new people and have the accountability to really be putting yourself out there um uh, you know i'd be doing presentations and getting people to it because I, I i'm still a presentation person but those power hours could be the next best thing 
All right, I am sorry, Brittany. You have got me so rocking excited up there as you're still like doing this, as we're like, you know, I would definitely say play a whole lot of music and make sure you are guarding your environment, guarding your environment and not allowing that belief to, to alter for one second. I really, really appreciate that. Brittany is always turned up. <laughs> 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 um, but I, we really, really appreciate the time that you took out, with, you know, to talk to us tonight. Like, we really, really especially me, like, I was just too hyped. Um, <laughs> but we really, really appreciate the time that you took out with us today. Um, I know that your time is really valuable, like, so we really appreciate it. Um, do we have anything else? Yes, well, thank you so much. Um, Karen, you are phenomenal. And I had to jump in and say, Thank you again. And we're going to have Cammy um, pray us out. Of course, everybody has a million and one questions now. Um, <laughs> so they all flow through. Y'all had no questions when Karen went out and I was sitting here trying to figure out some questions. But now I got a whole bunch of questions. <laughs> Do you want to know what's not on my schedule on month end? Showers. Showers are not a part of my schedule on month end. I am sorry. I think sometimes just when it couldn't get more disgusting, it does. But there's no BV in the shower. There's no BV in tooth teeth brushing. There's no BV in doing your laundry. There's no BV in the dishes getting done. I'm just saying. <laughs> Oh my God, it's hilarious. She said, honey, you know what we need to do? I never thought of this. Remember when we had those month end mugs, Rachel? Like yeah. it's month end. That's before we were in the coffee. We need to have month end hats. Like this is why I'm wearing a hat because it's month end. And I'm here a little more ratchet than that. So we're going to have to put some oil or some juice on it because if I could just put on a hat and go, Lord. <laughs> it would be a blessing. So we want you to pray us out. Um, so many questions. The biggest thing that I was reading through is circumventing. It's crazy because I have a, a focus group that I was talking to today, or maybe it was this morning. I don't know. I talk so much, but it was taught. We were talking about putting God in a box and that's a lot of y'all questions is because you put God in a box and you're looking at a diamond promotion. You're looking at like, you're looking at the rank and of course you want to be mindful and go for the rank. But I think it's about thinking, going bigger, right, Kimmy? About seeing the bigger picture and, like, you know, you're looking at how do I break out of this? Or, you know, Miss Cheryl, you asked about your team quitting and building back up that momentum. You get to create that, and so you can't you can't be helpless like that. And so I don't know if you want to speak to that, but there's a lot of people who want to break out and go diamond and beyond, but it starts with you. And so I guess if you can give one tip about seeing the bigger picture. And like you said, with your dad, like it, it, it's not, it's the small thing, it's beyond. You couldn't just see Ambassador anymore. You ambassador from 30 to, to that's $70,000 in between. Uh, I'll, I'll put it this way, two things. Number one, when I was building my 2.0 spot, I remember being one of the first presidential diamonds and I remember getting there and I'm, I, don't, I don't remember why, how my brother must have said, are you going for ambassador this month? And the words came out of my mouth and they said, whoo, I'm just going to try to survive presidential. I'm just going to try to maintain presidential. And, and there was no validating. It just was like words that came out of my mouth. And he was like, I don't think I've ever heard you talk like that before. He said, why wouldn't you be going for ambassador? You're automatically going to requalify for presidential. And I was just like, what a small mindset. So, you know, I heard today that in any business, any life thing that you're involved in that involves people, it's going to come with its sets of ups and it's going to come up with a sets of downs, whether it's work, whether it's personal church, school, you guys, people come with drama period. And in a business like this, it's just very much very normal in a business like this, that you're going to get people that come and go. A healthy business is a river, not a pond. And the best way to solve old problems or problems you got right now is just new people. And that might sound very like not loyal. Oh no, my friend, it's actually leadership. It's leadership. And all things that are healthy are gonna have people come and go. And I think sometimes it's easier for us to let that new person we just signed up go, but it's a whole lot harder to let a double or a triple go. 
but here's the deal. People are going to come and people are going to go. Your focus shouldn't be, how do I rebuild? How do I recover? Your focus should be like, that's just part of it. That's just the business I'm in. And there are going to be people that come and there are going to be people that go. So my job is to keep bringing in new people to keep setting that example with my team. And then the goal is not to like, remember if you aim for the moon, you'll land among the stars. So where are you aiming right now? Are you aiming for the stars or are you aiming for the moon? Because if you want to land among the stars, you got to aim for the moon, not at or under. And that's too often where we're focused on. So um, that's what I'd say, Rachel. That's good. You want to pray us out real quick? Hey. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you, Karen. You are phenomenal. I'm actually going to text you and tell you a little bit about her story and how her showing up tonight. Because she ain't shared it with everybody yet. But it's all right. She's going to share it some. But I'm just excited that she was even willing and volunteered to do this, not even knowing who our surprise guest was. And she got surprised by the big dog. All right, praise out. Thank you. <laughs> Put Mark Pentecost on your dream board now, Karen. Here we go. Hey. All right, Lord, thank you for this time together. I pray that you would bless the work of our hands. Uh, we ask for your favor, Lord. I love how Noah had favor. And I love that anybody that came into his life was just highly favored because he was in relationship with them. So I pray, Lord, that um, we would cut off connections that are not favored, that do not put us in a proper mindset or a position to go to that next level. I pray, God, that you'll help us be so super sensitive to the people and the, the places, the conversations um, that are going to not allow us to be in that place of favor. God, I pray that when people look at our lives, they will see you. It will scream you. And I ask God that you will help this platform that we call It Works be a, a platform that we can give your name the honor and the glory that it's due, Lord. So bless the work of our hands indeed, O Lord. Enlarge our territories. May your hand be upon us and keep us from evil that we might not cause others pain. Give us a double dose of wisdom, knowledge, and discernment. And as you, that still small voice speaks to each one of us, Lord, I pray that we would have the strength and the discipline to obey, following exactly where you're guiding us. And Lord, we know that you do not let any temptation beyond what we can bear come at us. So God, thank you for that. And so as we make plans, Lord, direct our steps, and that gives us just the confidence to know that where we are right now is exactly where we're supposed to be. But may it not be something that allows us to be complacent, Lord, um, but something that just gives us the confidence that we're exactly where we need to be on our path of purpose, Lord, as we continue to reach in the direction that you're guiding us. So Lord, may your will be done on earth here as it is in heaven. We love you. We praise your holy name. And we ask that you would just do immeasurably more in each one of our lives than, you, than we could ever ask or imagine. Thank you for setting us apart. Thank you for knowing us um, before we were even born. That feels so good. And it makes us feel so loved. So God, may that feeling of love become very real in our experience not just know that we're loved based on what we hear and what we understand but we feel it deep down deep that that resonates so intimately with each one of us lord because it's out of that love that we can go out and fulfill your plans and purposes for our lives in your name we pray amen love you guys love